Hi, I'm Pat from youlearnoffice.com with a demonstration on relative and absolute referencing when you need to copy formulas. And this is probably the most important thing you should know about Excel. You need to create formulas, but you also need to copy them if you want to work fast and create a great spreadsheet. But you need to master relative and absolute referencing in your formulas. So before we go into that, we need to cover one important thing, and that is that you should never, ever, ever, ever place a value inside the formula, like these two examples. Now I have the A1 cell address, but it's multiplied by 5. You don't put values in a formula. Or the next example, we multiply B55 by 30%. Put the 30% inside a cell. You need to place all the values into cells and always refer the content of those cells, like this example, like A1 multiplied by A2. Those are cell addresses, and the values I need are in there. Because what happens if you don't? What's easier, to change the content of a single cell? or to change the formula. You need to edit the formula and if you copy the formula to other cells you need to edit those as well. And that could be very long and also if you even forget just a single formula your entire model is invalid because you forgot to change a single value in a single formula. And that's not a good thing. So always put the content into cells and refer to them. Let's go back to our example here we, with an exchange rate between euros and US dollars. At this time the exchange rate between euros and US dollars is about a dollar and one thirty five, which means for every euro you need to spend a dollar thirty five US to get the same value. So I need to write a formula in cell B3 which will tell me how much US dollars I need to get 5 euros. So the formula is rather simple. I just need to enter equal B2 multiplied by B1. So it's 675 US dollars to get 5 euros. Now I need to copy this formula for the 10, 15 and 20 euros. So I place my cursor on the B3 cell, just press copy, then I select the cells where I want to place the formula and press paste. But it doesn't work. And why doesn't it work? So let's go back to the B3 cell, look at the formula bar here, and you see the uh, formula that we wrote. Well, it's equal B2 multiplied by B1. So, and we have the reference errors here, but if I go into C3, oh, there you go, C2 multiplied by C1, but there's nothing in C1. Okay, just to make sure, let's go to D3, same thing, D2 multiplied by D1, but there is nothing in D1. The exchange rate is in B1, so that's why it's multiplying 10 or 15 or 20 by zero and that's why we're not getting any values. So we need to change this formula to make it work. I really want to put the values into a single cell. I could copy the rate into the other cells but there's two reasons why I don't want to. First, it takes a lot of space in my worksheet and second where I could put some more important values and second if I need to change the exchange rate at one point and it changes every day, if I even forget to change a single value, my entire model is invalid again. So the easiest way is for the formula to always go and get the value in the same cell. So let's look at how to do that. First we have to understand how the formula works right now and the way in Excel understand this formula. So I'm in B3 and the formula is still B2 multiplied by B1, but the way Excel understands the formula actually is B2 looks for the value that's just above the formula. And for B1, it's two cells above the formula. 
it's relative to the location of the formula. Excel will always look X numbers of cells left, right, up or down relative to the location of the formula. So when we copied the formula to C3, it became C2 multiplied by C1. One cell above multiplied by two cells above. And the same thing for D3 and E3. So if I were to copy this formula into Y155, what would the formula look like? Think about it. Let's look at the answer. Actually, it would be Y154 multiplied by Y153 or one cell above multiplied by two cells above. It's relative to the location of the formula. And that's how Excel interprets your formulas unless you fix row or column in the formula. And that's the next part. So let's look at the cell addressing in your formulas. Now, if I were to use B1, just like it is, and copy the formula. If I copy horizontally, it's the column that would change. So it would change from B to C to D or E and so forth. Now, if I were to copy the formula vertically, it's the row number that would change from 1 to 2 or 3 or 4 or any other value. Now, if I were to fix the column address like I do in this case, I put a dollar sign in front of the column reference. So, if I were to say $B1, this part of the formula will always remain the same. I could copy the formula a hundred thousand times or more and in all the formulas you would see dollar $B which would always look for the value in column B. Now there's two more things I could do. I could put the dollar sign in front of the row number and it would always look at the value in row number one. Even if I copy it a thousand times vertically, it will always look at the value in the first row. And the last thing I can do is fix the column and the row by placing a dollar sign in front of each of them. So it would become dollar $B, dollar one. And if I were to copy this formula horizontally or vertically, it would always look for the value in cell B1. Now you have to be careful about this. Most people would just put dollar signs in front of both row and column and fix it this way. But depending on your formula and how you want to use it, you may need just to fix one, both or neither. It could be all relative or you could need to fix only the row or the column or both. You always have to look at your formula and how you want to copy it. Now let's go back to our exercise. In this particular case, the formula is still equal B2 multiplied by B1. And the problem is, I don't want to place values in C or D or E1. I, it always needs to go look at B1. And in this case, I want to copy the formula horizontally. So it's the column reference that needs to be fixed. So there are three ways to edit a formula. And the first one is to place the cursor in the cell you want and press the F2 key. And this way you can change the formula the way you want it. The second way is place your cursor on top of the cell and double click on the cell. And then you'll see your formula and you can change it again. And the third thing is you still select the cell, but place the cursor in the formula bar and change the formula you want to do it. Now, I need to copy this formula horizontally and it's the B1 that's the problem. So I really need to put a dollar sign in front of B. So it becomes equals B2 multiplied by dollar B1. And when I'm going to copy the formula, this part of the formula will remain the same. So I just press enter. You don't see the difference here, but if I do a copy and paste, let's see the answers. So I'll select B3, just press the copy button, select C, D and E3. That's where I want to place my formula and just paste it. And there you go, you have the right answers. But why? Let's go see C3 and look at the formula bar here. 
and you'll see your answer. So equal C2, that would be the $10, but multiplied by $B1. So it goes to column B, the first cell, and it's the exchange rate is there. So that's great. Let's look at D3 now. Equal D2, that's all relative. It's the cell just above, multiplied by $B1. So it always goes to B1 to get the exchange rate and finds the answer. So you have to be very careful. Are you you're going to use absolute and ref? Uh, uh, you're going to use relative and absolute referencing in when you need to copy a formula. If you just have to write a formula for one cell, it doesn't matter. But if you want to copy that formula, you have to think at relative and absolute referencing and where you want to put a dollar sign. Whether you want to not put any, put one in front of the column or the row or both.